You can cheat out a 10 mana unit on literally turn three. This is one of the better ways to do it. I mean, if you play ACL on turn two, what do they do? So we're literally just looking for a divergent paths and Poro Cannon. Or it's okay for divergent paths plus another discard, but turn two is Poro Cannon. No Thermo Beam. Sure, Thermo Beam is probably good for the opponent's strategy. The only problem is like, I mean, getting ASOL early is hilarious, but the deck does need some kind of alternative win condition. He's running a Fizz deck. Fizz Shadow Isle is interesting. So I guess I can touch face. Yeah, because we have enough mana to divergent paths anyway, right? So it shouldn't matter. But Divergent Paths is, is literally the only way in our deck to actually capitalize on releasing Aesol early. So without hitting it, we're pretty screwed. So I can use Rummage or Poro Cannon here. I guess Poro Cannon is a little bit better. <laughs> so now, I mean, let's just go ahead and uh, destroy this landmark. Okay, great. We have an ASOL. So it's a turn three ASOL. It's not as good as a turn two ASOL, but I'll take it. So the question, like, he does have this permanent Jailer, which is kind of annoying because it will block a decent amount down, but I just kind of have to be okay with that. Kill the Jailer. I mean, I have to challenge it because he can block with it whenever he wants anyway, right? But it's not like, I mean, it is, it is a free blocker we give him. Alright, so we've got an 11-11 ASOL. It's turn three. Uh, pretty good start. Pretty good start. And we're just gonna start getting, you know, these uh, neat Celestials every single turn. Cool. Kill a Jailer so you get two. Guys, that's not how it works. Ooh. Wait, that's broken. Chronicler gives you two champions. Wait a second. I guess I'll just play another Poro. Free discard fodder? Yeah, that's cheating. I mean, I'm just gonna kill that. I mean, I probably will be discarding most of what Aesol gets us. So he doesn't save it. Um, interesting. Yeah, he's just gonna surrender. I mean, we did just play an Aesol on turn three. I would probably surrender to that. <laughs> Aren't the decks supposed to be singleton? You would think so, wouldn't you? Guys, I'm not gonna mulligan the ASOL. Nox Guillotine isn't out with the Jailer having vulnerable. I mean, Noxus has a lot of those things, but then we're lacking discard or payoff. It's like Noxus has the payoff. PNZ has the discard. We're sorry, Noxus has like the trigger, PNZ has the discard, but neither region actually has like a good, expensive chance to play. So we just hit the like, oh. That was almost so perfect. We've got Overwhelm here. Where's the Divergent Paths, dude? Come on. Why even play it out? Like, why am I even, if, if I can't get turned to Aesol, who even cares? Isn't Heimer on turn two kind of nuts? Is it better than... Oh, do you, you mean for the PNZ Noxus version? At the end of the day, I'm sure the best version of this deck foregoes the idea of like the top end and just gets a really good card. Like PNZ Noxus with Heimer is, is probably like the best way to do this. However, it's just not as exciting. Yeah, PNC Noxus with Heimer actually sounds like the best way to do like an all-in strategy here. That sounds very good. So we need to cycle here. Sketcher doesn't really actually cycle at all. Oh. Unless you get the Doggo. And Doggo kind of sucks anyway. Honestly, uh, this Moonglow isn't proper here, but I'm just casually assuming that if I don't get the ASOL, then nothing matters anyway. I mean, we still have enough mana to do this, so I can just like Pale Cascade for free. Sure. Why not? We need the draw. 
Hit it. Nice. Got it. It's so easy. Turn four ace all is fine. And this is why we pay out Cascade. It's like, it wouldn't normally make sense, but we need to be able to, first of all, we need the draw for the, for the diversion anyway. And second of all, we need to like reduce jump blockers for this ace all. It's actually, it's pretty important that we just eliminate as many trump blockers as possible. Honestly, Flame Chompers is really sick for the ASL version. Like, that will actually allow us to just end certain games. Oh. Nopify? Wow, oh, man! Who the, f who the fuck is gonna be playing Nopify here? Come on! Come on! No! Don't do this! <laughs> Please! <laughs> Why? It's a slow roll! Oh my fucking god, dude. I'm so tilted. Holy shit. Who the fuck does this? Okay, I'll just draw another Divergent Paths next turn. We're fine. The ultimate challenger. Okay, I'll draw the other one. Just kill the 0 10. I mean, I can send a casual, like, 10 mana thermo into it, I guess. I can use Equinox and Hush. It's a 0-1 if I Hush it, right? I mean, there's actually a lot of ways to kill the 0-10, so I'm actually fine even if I don't draw Divergent Paths, but I do need to main deck Hush like a Degenerate. Silencing it is nuts. Yeah, silencing it is crazy. I mean, I'll I'll go for a silence hit right now. Why not? One star's is another spark. Calling strike. If we're in Noxus, I think PNZ is actually it's kind of funny, but PNZ is the most core of this strategy of any region. If we're going for the all-in early cheat champ, it has to be PNZ. I think. Like, if I went into Noxus for Calling Strike, that's not bad. But I think at that point, I'd have to cut... I'd have to run, like, Heimerdinger and run, like, PNZ Noxus and cut Targon. Targon's really funny just because Aesol has, like, a great stage presence. But it's not really, like... It's not really great. So what happens if I... If I had played the Daring Pora first... Yeah, play the Daring Pora first there. I don't think there's any way he can, like do enough at two mana to punish me for that because we're pretty close to lethal here get excited as well i mean get excited gives us lethal it is a turn six asol the thing is like is turn six asol actually that funny it's turn six that's so slow that's nothing that's literally nothing uh there's no rummage here that effectively does anything at all. All right. Dead men Gang fight. I mean, Daring Poro actually probably wants to be rummaged away, if anything. I think I can literally do this. There's a chance if he pops Asol here, I might want to Moon Silver it. Hello. Now they'll pay attention. Yeah, the silence is good. It's just a slightly slower version. So we see here if we casually happen to hit. Yeah, I guess I just move low. But if we hit the other get excited, then we just move in. Sure, that'll do it for me. Second Nopify coming in hot. Yeah, do it. Second Nopify me, dude. And yeah, that's the that's the power of flame choppers. Oh, good thing we didn't concede, huh? He's playing the singleton version. Are you sure? Oh, it's the pre-made deck. Yeah, you're right. He's playing the pre-made deck. A turn four 10-10 fury that gives me a card in hand every turn with spell shield and levels up later. That's garbage. Turn two, dude. That's where it's at. To be honest, if I was attacking on turn three, I would keep spacey hush, right? No, but then you don't get. 
See, it's awkward, because, like, Spacey Hush is good for the turn 2 attack, because then that's how you actually kill it. But then your Ace doesn't get to attack until 4. What's the point? Okay, we just need Cannon. We just need Cannon. We're on the wrong side of the coin. It's still a turn 2 Ace Hall. It still counts. It doesn't matter. We're on odds. It's still a turn 2. Oh, my fucking god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the one time I actually get it. All right. Well, this guy this guy thought he was going to be able to attack me with Boom Screw Rookie this turn. He was very very mistaken. <laughs> well, that's neat. If he kills our Asol, I can just get it back with diversion paths again. So we have the turn to Asol. The dream is actually being able to attack on two, but I'll have to settle for this. That's an interesting Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, this is okay. This is all right. Whatever. I'm getting Celestial cards every turn. It's a 10-10 spell shield that's going to grow. I really... I can't complain. God, why does everyone surrender? Emote him? If I emote him, I think it'll increase the odds of him surrendering. So I think this deck is basically perfect, actually. It's kind of crazy how quickly this was refined, but for this concept, this is like, I think every single slot is, feels pretty necessary. I mean, we've got Hush Zonite. Do we just keep Hush Zonite? It's turn two. He could have like, he's running Freljord. If he has a Vile Feast, we get screwed, right? I'm going in. I'm YOLOing. We're attacking. I need the Poro Cannon. We've got the turn two token. Just give it to me. Oh, we hit it. Oh, finally. My purpose. This is why we do it all. Oh, yes. <laughs> Feral Mystic. God, I've never heard that voice line before. What did he just say? Listen to... That's the first and last time I'll ever hear that voice line. So again, give it a second. Not yet. Go. There. That's the perfect time. So, I mean, I'll just drag this. Why not? It's free. <laughs> so I can't, I can't get the, the big, <coughs> I can't get the, uh, I can never remember the name of these KDA cards. They're so generic. The, the PNZ KDA finisher. I can't do it on turn four. Unfortunately, it's only six here. It's not doing anything. So now we just need to draw a very casual flame chompers. Just burst open for 11. Moonsilver is actually kind of adorable. Serpent lock. I mean, he's going to play another blocker anyway. So this serpent, I think, is doing nothing. But he can't avalanche here. He takes 11. So if he's using like a controlly deck and actually doesn't have a unit to play here, then we, we get our chance at a punch. Flash freeze. Okay, so that pops. And then Ice Bell Archer. He would play Archer on that action if he had it. No Archer? This is a lot of damage. I could play the last Poro, but I'm too afraid he'll concede if I do. <laughs> Alright, I got my one hit in. That's all I wanted. We're good now. We're good. He can concede now. I'd be happy. So, I'd love for him to do, like, hapless crumble so that we can actually just rebirth our ASOL with divergent pads anyway. That would be lovely. Guiding touch. Zana into nothing. Nine. Into nothing. 
Yeah, we can just cycle. These are useless. That's fine. I'm just gonna open here. I mean, we can threaten lethal off of spells. Is that eight mana? Eh, what actually punishes me slow playing this? It's not really anything, right? I certainly can't think of anything. I'm sure I never regret this. Thermo? Yeah, I could easily, like, if he's got a single blocker, I can Chompers and then Thermo Trundle or something. What about Donna Dusk? Ooh, Ice Quake. Ice Quake? Look out below. My Aesol's attack, all the way down to eight. <laughs> All right, good. Nice game. Ah, uh, so that's that's the Aesol deck anyway. It's actually surprisingly good in Labs. I mean, I don't know if if anyone. I mean, Labs is all about just kind of making your own stuff, but it's a very it's very fun for a few games, just cheesing wins with this.